you're about to finish your masterpiece and you're planning on hanging it. You want it to look like this, but you're afraid it's going to be more like this. Let's avoid that. <laughs> Let's really finish our piece. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. When we left off in part two, we had a naked tree and an uninspired plot of land. Let's change that and go a little further. Now, I know that some of you are also concerned about the saga of Marcello, Jasper, Martha, etc. from the end of part two. I'll let you know how things turn out with them at the end. <laughs> Let's pick right up where we left off yesterday. Okay, that is enough white for me. I'm good with that. What I want to do now is add a little bit of dimension to the tree. I've decided that the sun is here in the sky. So shade on this tree would be on the left side. I'm going to use a couple different markers. And if you have Spectrum Noirs, I'm starting out with IG6, which is like a medium gray. And I'm just gonna put little dots here sort of along the left side of the tree. Okay, now with a lighter gray, and this now is IG2, and I'm just going to come in now and blend in that gray. Pick it up a little bit, blend it in, so that I'm giving this side of the tree a little bit of shading. And I don't have to be perfect about getting all the dots blended in because those will also be part of the markings of a tree. So I'm just swirling, just making little circles. And as I do that, I pick up some color underneath and it gets kind of incorporated into this marker. That's how alcohol ink markers work. They blend well. So I'm just swirling and swirling, going up the side of the tree. So I'm giving it shading and birch marks all at the same time. Getting two tasks done at once. And I'll go back to the darker color and put in some more little marks that a birch would have that would be darker. And refer to some of your pictures. If you're not sure, I just make marks wherever I want. Now, if you don't have these markers, but you've got a super fine point Sharpie, let's do some with a Sharpie. I will put in some ultra fine details now with a Sharpie, really super fine ones. But let's say you wanted to do this thing that I was doing before of putting the dots here. Well, make all your little dots with your Sharpie and then with one of these guys, kind of wet this with just a little bit of alcohol, not a lot, just enough to get it damp. And then do the same thing that I was doing before, just kind of swiggle back and forth. And it'll pick up the Sharpie and do the same thing. But I'm using the Sharpie now to put in a lot of little, those little fine, fine lines that birch trees have. Just occasional suggestions of them. And then the little tiny branches that come out of nowhere and are very often just black for no apparent reason. <laughs> I kind of like, I don't know where this branch is coming from and why, but let's throw in some of those. And let's say you've got a little boo-boo in your sky. This is a good time to put a branch because you can hide a boo-boo with a branch. <laughs> so, or if there's like a little blip there, put a bird on it. <laughs> Oh, don't get too stressed out about what goes wrong in a painting. You could always figure out a way to hide it. There will always be something in nature that can come to your rescue and make your painting look like you'd planned it that way all along. <laughs> and have some come from behind the tree. And then have some start in front of the tree so that the origin of the branches is, is visible, meaning that it's in the front. Now I'd like a little bit of stuff down here. I'm thinking maybe some rocks, some boulders. I'm gonna put a big old boulder here. So I'm just using my Sharpie again, 
just going to make this shape. Nothing special. It's not like some magical boulder shape. Just, just a swiggly line. And then I'm going to have another one behind it. That's maybe a little smaller. And maybe there'll be one out here. And a littler one there. One here. This one might be so big that it runs off the painting. And I'm going to shade that in with the black marker. The bottom where the sun wouldn't shine. <laughs> one or two out here too. And then with the marker if you have one. Or one of these little tools. Just start to color in your rock. Remember where the sun is. The sun is like right about here. This side would be light and this side would be light. So the shade would be on this side of your rocks because the sun's right here. And I'm letting the marker pick up the black. The way alcohol markers work, they'll pick up a color, play with that color, and then discharge it. So eventually the black will come off this marker. So it keeps me from having to go get another brown. All I'm doing to get rid of the whatever black is, I'm just rubbing it off here until I get down to the original color of the marker. And putting in the lighter color now. And discharging the dark that it picked up. Give some highlights to other parts. I'm good with that. Now with DG4, just going to put in a little tree like bushy thing here. And I'm going to put in pine trees now. After I've made my little starting line, I am just going to flick out randomly, but shorter as I get toward the top. This is where I'll, with a brush, bring in some of the greens. I've poured in some lettuce to my little cap here and I'm just going to play in here with some green. And yeah, it's going to take on a lot of the brown at first, but as I play and play, I'll get it to go green. A couple drops of that. Now, if I wanted these trees to be the star, if you will, then I would have probably masked them off or cleaned out the area and let it go white before putting the green down. But this way, I'm getting them to be shaded. They don't scream, look at me, look at me, because they're off in the back. And for what I'm doing is what I would want. I'm looking at this and wondering, what else do I want to do to this? I'm thinking, since there are no leaves on the trees, maybe this is fall. I'm going to add little specks of color. I'm going to start out with a yellow green and I'm just going to tap around the base of the tree and I don't have to worry about the shape. I'm not trying to draw shapes of leaves because that's what's so awesome about alcohol inks is that they'll make little outlines for me without me doing a thing other than just tapping. And maybe little specks of orange so that the leaves would have different colors. And now I'm picking up some of the orange so that the orange spots aren't so well defined. Every time I touch an orange dot, it kind of gives that particular leaf a little bit of this yellow, green, and orange. So it looks all the more realistic. I am happy with that. I'm just kind of darkening up the foot of the mountains. And I'm going to leave this area by the pond light. I'm wondering if I want a little bit of vegetation down here, a teeny tiny itty bit bit. This is white ink mixed in with a couple of greens. I don't know what this life form is. Some plant, I don't know what it is. Okay, so that's enough of this vegetation. I decided, see how there's like a little line here where the terrain kind of changes? So, my rationalization for this greenery here 
<laughs> is that there is like a grassy thing that's still growing here, even in the fall. But as the beach kind of gets a little sandier down here, the terrain changes and it's too sandy for whatever this is to grow anymore. So it kind of trails off and this just stays all sandy over here. And there's like a little green valley out in the distance. Maybe it's a little grove of pine trees out there, far away. <laughs> some trees, some leaves have fallen down here. And now what I'm trying to decide is what I'm going to do with here. This feels a little empty to me. It feels a little bit like it could use something. Like I snuck in another branch here to break up this empty space, but I can't, it's not like I can send a branch all the way out here. So that's got to stop. I'm thinking maybe another cloud, a few little birds over here. I think I'm going to do a cloud. So if some of you are screaming at me, you can tell me all about it in the comments. <laughs> but I'm putting in a cloud. So I'm just adding some alcohol to the Q-tip. I'm just going to lightly dab, let's say here, and then see how much bloom happens and keep dabbing. Now this cloud is going to have a different quality than these airier ones. So I'm going to have to go in and do something to those so that they all kind of look like they happened at the same time. Because since I'm putting this in, as a dry cloud, like a cloud that's coming in on dry alcohol ink, it's going to have the little border, which is fine with me because I love those borders. But these guys don't have it because they happened in sort of a wet on wet kind of thing. So now I've got to come and play with this border a little bit just to give it that little outline quality. So this way I'm giving a little bit of texture to my clouds, which is cool because then it's giving the cloud, the sky area some interest, which I felt was lacking. I'm not going to mess with the one back there. That's too dangerous. That one's just going to have to stay the way it is, because otherwise I would mess up the tree. Not worth it. I'm just going to wipe in here, make it a little bit fluffier looking. That is making me happy. That has given this area, for me, more. So I'm really super curious as to what you guys think. Should I have messed with the clouds or not? Dum dum dum. Since I'm happy with the clouds and I'm overall happy with everything, I'm just going to put a little tiny little flock of birds right there. Just a couple. Maybe four, five, five. Odd numbers are better. I don't know why. That's just like a thing. And I'm just going to throw some in there right about here and again just a suggestion of a flock of birds they don't have to be perfect don't stress yourself out over stuff it's not necessary maybe one with its wings down see this one's looking like a turtle <laughs> a flying turtle that's it that's what this one is it is old flying turtle Part of the problem is the texture of the canvas kind of makes it difficult for the marker to move straight, or at least the way I intended to. Like I'm trying to make the stroke go this way, but it hits a valley and then a little hill and kind of gets all wonky. So the birds are a little wonky. Oh well. That's okay. You know what they are. Ah, good enough. <laughs> stop I'm stopping so flying turtle and friends <laughs> that's what's going out there yes okay now I'm just gonna remove the tape and we're gonna be calling this guy done let's see how we fared this time well they're still leaking So sad. <laughs> That's just gonna give me a little extra work. Ooh, yeah, serious leakage. Look at that. Leak, leak, leak. And this time around I really do want a border and you'll see why. Alright, 
like in the last video, I'm going to paint this in. And you know what? I think I'll go with more of an off-white this time. Might as well. I don't see why I should go to full-on white because the leaking is pretty pronounced. I'll use Americana's Titan Buff this time as opposed to um, Titanium White. Alrighty, let's do this. Okay, if you didn't see the last video yet, the way that I take care of this tragedy is I cut little strips of paper on a paper cutter so that the edges are perfectly straight. And I'm just going to set a piece down along the border that I need to have be perfectly straight and neat. And I'm just picking up some paint here. This is the other side of that cap, by the way, so this side's clean, it's not green. And I'm just picking up paint, and I push to put the brush down on the piece of paper and pull away so that what lands on the actual canvas is just paint. Um, and because I'm using a heavier body paint, it won't bleed under the paper. It won't want to. It's not runny. So it kind of has the consistency of toothpaste. So it's pretty well behaved. And I'm just going to do that all the way around. And in some spots, I might need two coats. That's okay. We'll be fine. So I do this all the way around. And then when I pull back, I have a nice clean edge. Okay, now that's done. I'm going to let this dry overnight and then I will spray the entire painting with a coat or two of Kamar varnish to seal and protect the painting. This will give the piece a glossy finish. If you prefer a matte finish, once the Kamar varnish dries, you can spray over it with a matte spray. You can also add a coat of UV protection on top of the Kamar. Just make sure the Kamar is the spray that goes on first, because unlike any others, it will not cause the alcohol inks to reactivate, to move, or to bleed. Okay, it's been a day and my painting is fully dry. Let's really finish it and frame it. If you're new to the channel, take a quick second to click that subscribe button right now and hit that bell so that you get to see every new info and hopefully fun-filled video. Remember the advantage I mentioned about canvas panels? Well, they come in standard sizes, just like the sizes available for picture frames. And because canvas panels are relatively flat, they will fit in most frames. Just remove the glass and the rear panel and put in your piece instead. Stick around and I'll show you how that looks. Before framing it, I like to finish off the back of a panel in a nicer way if I want to sell my piece. For that, I'm going to use cardstock so that I can't see through it. But lots of craft stores have gorgeous single sheets of paper that can work too. This particular cardstock mimics parchment, but choose one that either looks good with the frame and or works well for your brand. I print my logo, the name of the piece if it has one, the medium and the date, and then I sign the piece. I then glue this on the back to both cover up any spilled alcohol ink and the less attractive stuff that's often printed on the reverse side of panels. Now that this step is done, 
I'm just going to remove the inner parts of the frame and replace them with my painting. Close it all up and finally add whatever hanging hardware would work. These are two readily available options. This is called a sawtooth hanger that you just hammer in or one of these that you can either put as a single piece or as a pair and you can also string a wire between the two of them. These are best screwed in if you can but sometimes a frame is too thin for the screws so a heavy duty glue is also an option. And voila! An easily framed piece complete with a simple and neat inner border to nicely offset the painting from the frame. I think this looks nicer than this. But let me know what you think. If you like the border, you can choose to paint yours any color to coordinate with either the painting and or the frame. I hope that you now feel empowered to paint on canvas with alcohol inks, both thinned, like in part one, and straight from the bottle, like in part two and three. And I hope you've got some ideas for how to finish your pieces. Give a thumbs up to ask for more videos. As always, links for everything I used are in the description box below and can be found in the convenient Amazon shopping list I've set up for all of you. Thank you for helping my channel continue by using one of my links as your gateway to Amazon right before doing any shopping and completing a purchase. Okay, for those of you eagerly awaiting the developments from As the Ink Flows, or maybe it's The Inks of Our Lives. <laughs> sure which one. But when we left off, we weren't sure if Isabella marries Marcello or who Jasper's dad was. We thought Martha could be cheating. Poor unsuspecting Alfred. <laughs> well, Isabella decided to just be friends with Marcello after finding out that he was her mom's best friend's long lost parakeet in another life. <laughs> And as for Jasper's paternity, according to a viewer, yes, you, Pamela, it turns out that some cad named Emilio is the dad. And she, the viewer, could be the mom. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm speechless. <laughs> In the comments, let me know what you think of all of this. <laughs> And what you'd like to see next. Share this video and most importantly remember to subscribe and hit that bell. It's for your own good. <laughs> I want you to catch every tip, trick, and technique. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Now go let your creative nature shine. I'll see you next time. Bye now. <laughs>